welcome back after break. Uh, just before we went for our break, uh, we said we're talking about, uh, you know, admiring, uh, you know, beauty in uh, women that we see or, you know, when the women look at men, you know, just admiring them, appreciating them for their beauty, how handsome they look. That's not a sin, but it's how we handle what we see, where we take it to the next level. That is in our hands and that's where we need to control our Ourselves. So that, you know, thought, that gaze, that look can turn to a lustful thought, a desire to possess, uh, you know, can stir up our emotions and then we can fall into uh, sin. Okay. So we have to take control of our emotions, uh, our thoughts. How do we do that? How do we take control of our emotions and our thoughts? How do we guard our thoughts and our emotions? You have to meditate on scripture, okay? So, you know, fill your heart and mind with the word of God so that, you know, when you look at those lustful thoughts come, you know, you can just say Job chapter 31 verse 1. It says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Oh, when then shall I look upon a young woman? Okay, Psalm 101 verse 3 says, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. First Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from every form of evil, Okay. So God's word is powerful. God's word cleanses us, uh, rebukes us, corrects us, and helps us. Okay? How else can we guard ourselves? How else can we guard ourselves? Pray. Okay? Yes. You need to speak to that thought. Okay, what am I thinking? You know, I mean, not just when you are, you know, thinking, having some lustful thoughts, even if you're having some wrong, wicked thoughts, evil thoughts towards others, or you're thinking something that's not right, say, hey, what am I thinking? You know, uh, sometimes I do that, you know, when I'm thinking something that is not right, I say, oh, what am I thinking? How can that very thought just come into my mind? I'm so sorry, God. Uh, please help me. You know, Holy Spirit, just take this thought away from me. You just speak to yourself, you know, speak, take control of your emotions right then that is coming in, in your heart and, you know, uh, in your mind, okay? The other way, another thing that we can do to guard ourselves against women uh, or as women against men is, you know, treat, uh, like Paul says, uh, writing to Timothy, he says in First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Can one of you please read that? First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Read it. Yeah. Can you pass on that mic so that next one somebody can read? Okay, when you see it. Yeah. So here Paul is telling Timothy, how should you treat uh, younger and older women? Older men and women, how do you treat them? Fathers and mothers. How do you treat younger women? Brothers and sisters, sometimes we can call brother and sister, but then, you know, we can have all things that are happening that is wrong. But he says, do it with all purity. You know, sometimes in ministry, we have to interact with people of the opposite sex. So, you know, we have to, men have to interact with women. Sometimes, you know, you'll have people come to ask you to pray. Uh, you know, you they'll share their problems with you. You have to counsel them, encourage them. When you do that, you need to guard your heart. And your mind. Okay, keep your motivations, thoughts, your emotions pure in the process as you are helping them. If you sense somebody is approaching you in the wrong way, in the wrong uh, manner, you know, with wrong intentions and affections, then you need to guard yourself, you know, step back, guard yourself. Uh, maybe next time the person comes, just walk away once or twice, you know, then you're, you're telling that person, hey, I know what is your motive, your agenda, you know. Or you can just say, you know, going forward, I'm going to put you on to another brother or I'm going to put you on to another sister who can help you because this is how far I can help you going forward. That person can help you. Just call the person, have the person with you, tell them that person, you know, tell, introduce the person to the other person who's counseling them, going to help them and just leave it and move away. That's one way you can guard them. Okay. Uh, um, Paul writing to young Titus, who's looking after the churches at uh, Ephesus, uh, sorry, Crete, okay, Titus looking at the churches at, uh, overseeing the churches at Crete, 
uh, Paul uh, writes to him in Titus chapter 2, verses 3 uh, to 5. Can one of you please read that? Titus 2, 3 to 5. That they be reverent to not slander, not, not slander, not give it too much uh, teachers of the truth. That they admonish the angry to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, and make good to the most that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Thank you. So here Paul is teaching Titus and saying, you know, let the older woman who are teachers who are ministering in the church, you know, let them be ones who are teaching and ministering to the younger people. Why is he writing to this to Titus? Because Titus is, is a young person and he's, he's a leader. You know, many people will come to him, approach him for their needs. So he's telling him in advance, let the older women who are teaching, who are elders in the church, let them take care of the younger people. Let them mentor them, teach them, pray and help them. You take care of the men, okay? Uh, so, you know, uh, in ministry, we will have people who come to us, uh, you know, uh, for various needs, uh, but we need to uh, uh, be on guard. If we're spending too much of time counseling, mentoring somebody of the opposite sex, then we need to, you know, stop. Okay, that's where we need to, you know, guard ourselves and say, hey, this is this counseling session is one, two, three, four, five sessions now. It's very dangerous because, you know, the person who's coming to you for counseling and for me is emotionally instable. And you know what happens when a person is emotionally instable uh, or when somebody is going through a problem or difficulty, you know, their emotional needs are very high. They're looking for somebody to listen to them, accept them, love them, help them. And here you're somebody who's spending time listening, helping, guiding, doing everything that it takes in the right way, with the right motive. But the person across is thinking it in the, in another sense of all oh, this, you know, and they become very dependent on it. And what happens, there can be an emotional attachment. And before you know it, you can emotionally get attached to the other person. It's happened. And it's very, very normal, okay, that it happens. Um, uh, we are very emotional beings and we can get carried away. And that is why it's important, you know, one or two counseling sessions find your if it is going to more and the person needs more help, then put them over to a, a woman who can help or to a man who can uh, help them and take things forward. And that is what Paul is admonishing a young Titus, okay? Uh, when we are leading ministries, we can have uh, women or young people who are leaders, youth leaders, children, church pastors, prayer leaders, women, all women serving you know, in church, volunteer heads, various heads. They can be people who are part of our team. So, you know, uh, don't uh, differentiate between a man and woman because, uh, you know, the gifts of the spirit is given equally to both men and women. Uh, you know, uh, the, God's gifts is grace, blessing, empowering, is equal for both men and women. So treat both men and women equally, provide responsibilities for both of them in the areas of their calling, their functions, their gifts, uh, so that they can serve, uh, you know, lead and carry on their responsibility. Uh, but as even as they do, we need to expect that they also live to the same standards of conduct and accountability, just like men. Because the women doesn't mean that, you know, we give them some leverage. Yes, we kind of be gentle with how we, we men deal with women. You be gentle with them, recognize their strengths and weaknesses, but hold them accountable to the same moral ethical conduct and standards and accountability uh, but also know they can they also have the same gifts grace and the blessings it's equally given to both men and women uh, but when you are uh, you know leading them lead from a distance okay lead women or when women are leading men lead them only in the area of their uh, ministry related aspects now if a woman is married then you don't, you know, um, uh, you don't step into the marriage and tell her what she should be doing uh, in the in her family, in her um, in her relationship with her spouse, or uh, if she has a problem and comes to you, that's fine. You can counsel, but you don't step into the area of marriage. You only relate to the person in the area of their responsibilities, spiritual um, responsibilities or roles that they are handling in church. When it comes to marriage and home, 
you know uh, who is the head of the family the husband father they, they are accountable to the husband and the father and let them you know uh, discuss things with their husband you know uh, you give them only instructions and guidance in the area of ministries all other areas the husband is uh, responsible because ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 says wives submit to your own husbands as to the lord okay so if they need emotional support if they need companionship you know a man cannot afford, give it to a woman they're not getting it from their husband you put them on to another senior woman or a, a mother in the church and another sister in the church you can have them and guide them okay um you know stay away sometimes from uh you know uh, it's good to stay away from you know not indulging too much or relating too much with the opposite sex because you know we all have common emotional needs what are our common emotional needs we all want affection we all want appreciation uh, when you know what we want people to admire us uh, you know we want people to converse with us talk with us and companionship and trust this is something that all of us you know whoever we are we know we are very a spiritual giant highly spiritual all of us need it and sometimes some of these emotional needs go unmet you know when it's not met we look for it outside married and if you don't get affection appreciation admiration uh, you know people don't admire you your husband doesn't have time to talk to you discuss things with you there's no companionship you're looking for it in the you're looking for it outside either it can be a church where you're ministering or it can be in the workplace and that is why nowadays with the big work schedules there's a lot of broken marriages and extramarital affairs because husband and wives are working on different ships or you know they don't see each other they don't spend time with each other and you're there in the office so there is a there's a young man who you know talks nicely there talking laughing this that and you get emotionally attacked and that is why there is such a you know, sadly, there's a breakage of marriage and adultery, some marital affairs that are happening in the workplaces, uh, in, a, in, in the corporate offices like um, Bangalore City. And it's sad because people are, uh, you know, uh, uh, their unmet emotional needs are met by somebody outside. Okay. So, you know, when that happens, you can get easily attracted. And, you know, you can, it can be an area where you can fall and get into a very a lot of unnecessary things and it can be also a trap that is set by uh, satan so you know there are some things that you need to avoid so what are the things that you can avoid firstly pastor has put some things that he avoids you can have your own you know own rules depending upon your own weaknesses or you know areas of your strengths whatever you can uh, you know have things that you can avoid so avoid complimenting ladies telling them how good they look how smart how beautiful they look i like your sari i like your dress i like your jewelry so avoid complimenting okay avoid uh, complimenting um, uh, for their looks or their attire uh, don't engage in too much of a conversation with the opposite sex just whatever is needed minimal you know converse talk uh, even when you're in the office setup ministry office setup you can do that same thing you know, avoid, avoid trying to be a close companion or an emotional support to somebody of the opposite sex. Okay? These are some things that you can avoid. If you want to add to that list, you can add. And it's important that we do that. You know? So even for me, it's important that I do that. Because in our office, we have many young people. You know, we relate, we talk. Uh, I, I'm just very careful, you know who I go out with lunch, who I go out with coffee and tea, who I'm talking to more, engaging. They're having uh, lunch, you know, not having constantly the same person, you know, every time I get to office. So some of those things, even I need to keep myself on guard and check. Unnecessarily, don't get, you know, even though you don't have that in your mind, you're, you're sending across some unwanted messages to the other person who can interpret things wrong. And sometimes you can think, okay, hey, that is a younger brother. He's 10, 15 years younger to me. So I can treat him like a like my own brother. It has happened once in, in my own case, you know, in ministry, uh, in the previous place, there was a young boy who came in from a very low background. 
so I was like, a, and there was like more than 20 years difference between him and me. And, you know, I was treating him like a brother, very nice to him, helping him, supporting him. And suddenly one day, you know, he's telling me all uh, strange things. And I was totally shocked. And I told him, see, you know, uh, I'm just looking at you as a younger brother. And you know, what is my age and what is your age? He said, you know, in love and all age, does it matter? And I'm shocked. And I'm totally shocked. And, you know, uh, that, uh, that, you know, that was one, one area where I, I really, honestly, I let my guard down because I thought he's a young son. And I'm usually very strict with, uh, uh, when it comes with relating with men, even in Bible college, you know, all my uh, juniors used to say, we well, get very scared with, uh, uh, with you, you know, we do, they don't want to come and sit with me in a dining hall on the, uh, in the library because I just maintain my guard. You know, so they say, we're very scared of you. They're just one look of you, you know, we're so scared. And I, I'm inside, I'm thinking very good, you know, I just keep myself. Because emotionally, we're all staying in the Bible college on campus. We can get so emotionally attached, unnecessary. And this happened and I was like, okay, this is the end. You know, no more showing love and affection to anybody if they are not my blood brother. They're not my own blood brother. And that really taught me a lesson. And I'm sharing it. Because it can happen to any one of us innocently. And then, you know, the relationship goes sour and all of those things. And it's just unwanted. And it's very sad. Okay. So you have to have your own personal defense plan. So for pastor has put down some of his defense plans. You can also have your own. You know, when pastor prays for a lady, at the most, you stand on their head. Or you just stand from a distance and pray. But if they have some problem in some part of the body, tells them to put their own hand and then he just uh, prays. You know, uh, if you have to counsel a lady, he just counsels once or twice or then he puts them on to another lady. Okay. Uh, if he's meeting some a lady individually for discussion, you know, it's in a place where it's visible, people can see so that nothing, uh, the, the, the person cannot point later on and say, you know, this happened, that happened, uh, which was, you know, unnecessary, unwanted. Okay. Also keep, uh, uh, you know, a healthy distance. Don't engage too much with casual conversation. We've already said this. Avoid hugging the opposite sex, you know, just formal handshake. Sometimes even handshake is not required. Just say hello is more than enough. Nowadays, even handshake can be very dangerous. In our days, it's okay. Handshake is fine. But now also is handshake can be a little more dangerous. I, I feel that. I don't know. You know, and then avoid traveling with another lady or man alone in the in your own vehicle. You know, you want to just drop them or anything. Uh, so these are some of the golden rules that you can have to protect yourself. It's important that you do things to protect yourself. Even now, you say, I'm not in ministry, I'm only in Bible college. More important also in Bible college. Yes, it's very important. But because in our Bible college, and I studied for six years, we are away from home, sometimes emotionally disturbed and distressed. A lot of things happen. Unwanted. It just takes away your focus from studying the word of God, focusing on classes, you know, the, the, the devil can just tell you, divert your thoughts, you're not focusing, you cannot study, you get emotionally attached, and then, then the person says, I'm not interested, sorry, I just looked at you as a sister and all that, and then you're heartbroken, you cannot continue your studies. All that is really unnecessary and unwanted, so just keep your heart and mind in check and guard and be careful. Um, in the Bible, we read in Romans chapter 16, verse 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 20, 2 Corinthians 13, 12, 1 Thessalonians 5, 26. Uh, we read about the holy kiss. Okay? So what is this holy kiss? In, 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 in those days, false times, you know, they used to greet people with the holy kiss. But, um, you know, it, it stopped because not that it was abused, but in one of the commentaries which I read, it was, uh, you know, one of the, uh, uh, you know, one of the leaders, uh, uh, you know, was saying that this is being abused in the churches, so they they stopped it. But um, you know, it's also because the church becomes too numerous; you can't go around kissing everybody. Uh, uh, so you know, uh, in in some customs, it's okay. You know, it's not evil to kiss or hug another person, uh, and it's not abuse because it because it is the culture. Uh, you know, it's common, but in our culture, in our, uh, it's, we don't kiss, right? It's not, uh, it's not something that we do. Uh, just a handshake or uh, just namaste or hello, whatever. 
works. That's good. Okay. Um, you know, there are two uh, times or seasons in our life where we need to be on double guard. One season is when you are, you know, you know, you have um, come to a place where you are triumphing or you're, you know, you are celebrating a success in your life. That is one area where you need to be very, very careful. Because in the in the time when you are, um, you know, you are uh, uh, excited, you are uh, celebrating a success in life can also be an area where you can let your guard down and there can become a downfall. Can be one area where Satan easily can tempt you. So, you know, there can be a young lady who comes or a young man who comes and says, oh, you know, uh, what a successful ministry, you know, what a successful crusade, how well you preach or, you know, your show was so good and this, that, and, you know, pride strikes in and ego, your ego is this one and you're so excited and sure there's something who's flattering you and encouraging you. And then you can get emotionally attached to that person and it can become a, you know, can lead to a downfall. Another season that you need to be very careful is seasons when you go through hurt, when you're emotionally strained, hurt, disappointed, going through a struggle. You know, um, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, that time you're wounded, you're weary, you're also very vulnerable to uh, a downfall. You know, because at that time when you're not emotionally, when you're emotionally stable, or not stable, you know, uh, anyone who comes and gives you love, support, encouragement, you know, we tend to emotionally fall for them and that can also be an area where the enemy can use a small trap to get in and can build a whole you know thought process in our mind and can bring our downfall you know once a thought process is built in our mind it becomes like a strong goal like a fort it's very difficult to break that thought even if that person says hey i don't love you what I was doing was just because I'm a very friendly person, loving person, outgoing person. You have misunderstood me, but you are not willing to let go and give in because it becomes a strong goal. It's very difficult to break. So don't do that. You know, uh, these two seasons, these two times in life, we need to be on guard. Uh, so when you're saying these two seasons, don't think other seasons you can be okay. No, all seasons you have to be on guard. Okay. Um, you know, don't put confidence or trust in your flesh. Uh, your flesh is faithful to do the devil's job. You know, when you're born again, only your spirit has the life and nature of God. But your flesh can, you know, can do the devil's job. Um, sometimes even if the devil is not around, you can fall into sin. Okay. Uh, when do we fall into sin? James chapter 1 verse 14 tells us that. James very clearly tells us that each one is tempted. When they are tempted, when they are drawn away by their own desires and enticed. We are in the point, guard your affections. Okay. When do we get tempted? Many of us say, you know, the, the devil came and tempted me and I fell easily into temptation. But what does the word of God say? When do we get tempted? We get, we get tempted when we are drawn away by our own desires. So it's just the, sometimes the devil just putting one desire finished. That can get in, lead into uh, temptation. Sometimes it can only be our own desires and we are enticed. What is the meaning of enticed? You're caught like a trap, you know, like a, like a, uh, you know, the person who, Hunter goes to trap an animal, he puts a trap and the animal gets totally trapped, cannot get out of that trap. So it's our own desires that we get enticed in that can lead us into uh, temptation. So the devil is always looking for a small desire. One small desire, he can catch you, trap you, entice, and lead that into, entice you, and that can lead into uh, uh, temptation. So what do you do in such seasons? You know, such seasons, you just be on double guard. Avoid making any decisions. Don't get, uh, you know, connected with somebody on the opposite sex. Just have relationships with people who can mentor you, guide you. A man with man, woman with woman, and can help you in that season. Okay? So you need to do that. Um, so don't blame the devil for all the temptations. The devil's job is just put a small desire. The rest is uh, taken care of. Okay? So we need to... Watch and pray so that you cannot don't fall into 
temptation. Then you need to desire, uh, discern and destroy soulish bridges. Okay. Now, all the devil does is just put a small thought and idea in imagine, imagination that is ungodly, that is not pleasing in God's sight. And what we do is we just yield to our fleshly lust and un, uh, ungodly thoughts. And then, you know, um, uh, the enemy tries to set up soulish attractions. You know, sometimes we can get attracted to a person without that person knowing, and it can even go for years and not just thinking, you know, uh, having all plans and thoughts. And sometimes it's like a movie just running in your mind, you know, thoughts and, and everything can just go, oh, he just upset me, you know, why he upset me, and why he said this, why he gave me this, why she did this, why she did that. You can just build on one small thing, it can run into a full movie sequence running in your mind, and you can just enjoy it. And it can run for months and years. You know, people can get caught up for months and years. You know, that is a soulish attachment, emotional attachment, infection, which you need to be very, very careful. Okay? Avoid that. Be careful of the enemy's tactics. So what do you do? You guard your heart and mind with the word of God. Rebuke everything. Tear down every thought. Uh, you know, some boy or some girl is talking or man or woman is talking nicely to you don't think you know go to extra levels of thinking unwanted thoughts just cut the thought there and say no he just did it to me this son is a friendly person i shouldn't take it i should avoid this this is not godly you know next time i should not go near if you're thinking next time i should not go near that person you know not in the not talk just keep away from that person do what it is you know it takes in your area fight the good fight you know, and um, um, and you know, fight till the end till you win. It's not impossible. You can do it with God's strength, but you need to guard your mind and the thoughts that enter into your. Okay. Any questions on this lesson? Any questions? No questions on women. <laughs> no questions on men. So we should be very careful even in Bible college. I've seen many of them. I studied six years in Bible college. Sometimes it can be a mess for people. Sometimes you can, you know, you won't even feel safe in a, in a Bible college. Sometimes I've not felt safe being in a Bible college because it was an environment where all people are coming to study about the Word of God, the spiritual people. You know? I worked with drug addicts and alcoholics, male drug addicts and alcoholics. I never felt so much threatened or you know, protect myself than how I had to protect myself in Bible college. So what am I saying is, you know, the enemy works overtime there. You know, he works overtime to destroy our lives, young people. So all of you are young. Uh, you need to guard yourselves, be careful. If there's anything, talk it with somebody, pass down those thoughts. You know, others is just going to, you know, it's going to hinder your uh, time that you are going to learn from God's word. Prepare yourself for this. And then you look back, you say, what a waste of time. Two years, I loved this person. And then before leaving Bible college, I told that person, that person said, no, two years, I wasted my time. You say that, if two years, I wasted my time. I couldn't concentrate. I failed in my uh, in my assignment, in my assessment, what a waste of time. Only if I had known and done this thing. Don't do that. You know, your time here to study. Emotional attachments happen. Talk it out with somebody. You know, deal with it. Handle it. Handle it. If you really love somebody, okay. See how you can do it, but do it in the right way. But focus on what you have come here to equip yourself in the word of. Okay, so we'll move on to chapter 11, our last lesson, same, okay. You know, so most times we don't feel good uh, when we are not recognized, when we are not affirmed, uh, you know, when people don't applaud us, when people don't even invite us. That person didn't invite me for their birthday party or for their wedding, you know, uh, we feel depressed. Sometimes we don't feel, we even receive favor from God when we don't receive uh, recognition, applause, 
uh, you know, um, but we should live above that. Even if we don't get applause, affirmations from people, you know, uh, recognition, don't look for it from men. Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 41. Any one of you would like to read John chapter 5, verse 41? Do not receive honor from men. Okay? So, uh, you know, don't look for honor and, um, uh, you know, to be affirmed and recognized. Just do what God has called you to do. It's God who will set you up in honor and fame. Don't run behind fame. Okay? Uh, you know, everything is about God. Okay? His anointing. Uh, we are just his vessels. It's his anointing. It's his gifts. It's his grace. Uh, it's his calling that works in and through us. And when we respect that, honor that, and we are in the right place, right time to do what God wants us to do, fulfilling our call, you know, the grace will come, the anointing will come, and also, you know, God will, uh, you know, uh, raise us up to a level of respect, of honor, of position. But you don't go behind that. And it's very sad that, you know, uh, many men and women of God, you know, who are in ministry, uh, they look for fame. So if they have any crusades, uh, or if you go to the churches, or if they're having any meetings, everywhere you will see only life-size photos of them, posters of them. So go to the, uh, to the churches, you will find only, you won't find, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, wall hangings with verses from scripture. But you'll find wall hangings of what this pastor has made great statements. You know, some some men and women make statements and they become like really profound statements. And you know, that will all be in their in their offices, in their sun, their photos, their images. Um, uh, you know, if they met a great man of God, a woman of God, and they take with the photo of Mother Teresa, it would be there. Or if you know Billy Graham, it would be there. You know. Uh, but it has nothing to do, it's just showing your fame, so just showing that, oh, you're such a famous person, you have connects with all these people who have met them, uh, you know, you are making famous quotes, it's much more famous than the word of God, which people are quoting, thinking, uh, talking about, you know, um, and uh, at that time, you know, you're, you're doing that, uh, not giving glory to God, and your ministry is more self-related than focusing on God and pointing people to God. But our ministry should be not pointing at us, what we do, but it should be pointing at Jesus and leading them to Jesus and to the word of God. So don't look for a fame, uh, but good name is more important than fame. How do you get a good name? Good name you get by the, the kind of life that you live, consistent character, okay, your character, okay, uh, fame, comes overnight, but it can also disappear overnight. You can be famous, but one thing you can do wrong, people will honor you today. Everybody, you know, uh, uh, for Jesus, they put their cloaks down. Uh, they said, Hosanna to the King of Kings. And then the very next day, uh, day, they were saying, crucify him, release to us Barabbas. It does the same crowd who was saying, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna, they were waving their palm, palm branches. The very next day, they said, crucify him. Okay, so the same people who can uh, honor you, can respect you, can they can also crucify you. Okay, so um, you know, fame disappears, but a good name stands. So what you need to pursue is not fame or being famous, having many people liking you, following you, looking at your uh, reading messages, many thumbs up, Insta great Instagram following, and all of those things. You know, you have to pursue to be more Christ-like. Because when you're pursuing being Christ-like, you know, you are pointing people to Christ. You know what Jesus did? Every time he did a miracle, what did people do? They glorified the Father who was in. So Jesus was pointing always to his uh, Father. Okay? So uh, don't be a man pleaser, but be a God pleaser. You know, uh, sometimes in ministry, uh, we do everything to please men. The, uh, you know, the style, the charisma, the way we talk with people, you know, our preaching, we only preach what people want to listen to us. You know, when we do all of those things, we're actually doing it to be men pleasers, but we need to be God pleasers. Okay. Um, uh, how do, how else do we know that, you know, we are men pleasers is, you know, when people um, uh, 
uh, offend, you know, uh, when people leave church or they leave the ministry or they don't talk to us or they criticize us, we get easily offended. When we get easily offended, at those times, we are just being men pleasers. You know, or if, um, you know, we get hurt if no one appreciates us or supports us or applauds us. You know, all this is setting our heart or affection on men. But if we are pleasing God, we're looking at not how many people came and said, oh, what a wonderful sermon, how well you preached, you know, all of that. We're just looking at people saying, oh, your sermon just, it was something that encouraged me, somebody that something that corrected me. I just felt the presence of God. I just felt the love of God. That is what we need to be looking at. That whatever we are ministering, teaching, preaching, singing, leading worship, it's not how well we sang, how well we worshiped, how well we led, but are we, our desire should be say, God, if, even if I, as I'm leading worship, God, it's not my voice, how well I sing, how many songs I can sing, you know, it's about leading people. So when people come and say, when you lead worship, we can really feel the presence of God. We are assured, and I feel healing, I feel restoration, I feel peace. That is what we are aiming at. Okay? Uh, don't engage in self-promotion. Let God give you the increase. Okay. Um, like uh, we read this verse in First Corinthians chapter three, verse six and seven. You know, Paul says. Uh, you know, some say. Uh, you know, um, uh, I planted, Apollos watered, but Paul says, who gives the increase? It's God who gives the increase. So it's neither he who plants anything or he who waters, but it's God who gives the increase. So, you know, don't think whatever you are doing is because of your anointing, your power, you are being very spiritually mature, spending a lot of time in God, and that's why, but it's what the Holy Spirit is working in and through uh, you. So don't engage in self-promotion. Don't promote yourself. Don't promote your ministry. Uh, you know, don't do anything for for yourself to be more well-known, more famous, more recognized. Um, but do things uh, to glorify. So whatever you're doing, you need to ask your first question: Why am I doing this? Am I doing it so that people I can be glorified in front of people? People can, uh, you know applaud me, recognize me, or am I doing it to build God's kingdom, serve people, people to be edified and enriched, and, uh, you know, to point them to Christ that God can be ultimately glorified, okay? So, you know, let Jesus build your ministry, okay? Let the increase and overflow come from what God is doing in your ministry and not what you are promoting. It's not your meetings, your conferences, your events, uh, but it is what God is doing in and through you. Okay? Don't think that fruitfulness uh, is an indication of your popularity. Sometimes we think we're very famous, uh, very popular, everybody knows us. Don't think when we do that, we are being fruitful. Okay? Look at what, um, uh, you know, God is uh, saying about the church uh, at Sardis, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, where John is writing about the seven churches. Uh, God is speaking about the seven churches. What is he saying about the church at Sardis? So can somebody read that, please, loudly with the mic? Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. Angels of the church at Sardis, right? Is the mic on? Okay. This thing says, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works that you have seen that you are alive for this. Yes. So, what is um, uh, John saying? Uh, what is uh, the Spirit telling, revealing to John about the church of Sardis? He's saying, I know your works. Your works are very good. So, it's showing everybody that this church is a very vibrant church, it's a very alive church. But to God, what are they coming across as? dead church okay so people can look at you as a very vibrant church you know a very exciting church lively church but in the eyes of god you are dead when in the eyes of god can we be dead even though in the eyes of people we can be very vibrant and alive we can be dead in god's sight when we are not doing his will right when we're doing things to be pleasing people rather than god 
we're not doing what is the father's will you know at at that time you know our deeds can be great but then in the sight of god we are as good as dead okay any questions so far anyone has any questions so far no okay you know, uh, in ministry, we need to separate ourselves from what people think about you. Okay, uh, don't get caught up with everything that people say. You know, some people say good about you, some people say bad about you, some people will honor you, some people will dishonor you, some people will give a good report about you, some people will give a false report about you. But you know, uh, when people applaud you, when people honor you, when people give you a good report. They speak highly of you, nicely about you. You know, you need to guard your mind. Guard your mind against right. Okay? Because when we become very proud, if somebody is trying to show us our weakness or fault, some area where we can do better, they come and tell us, we will get very angry, we will not take it, we will, you know, get into strife and then lead into division and all of those things. So guard your mind against pride. And even when people dishonor you, speak bad about you, give an evil report about you, guard your heart. Because you can't minister with a wounded heart and a wounded mind. Okay? So there are times when people say things that are bad, you know, go take it to the Lord. You know, I've just taken it to the Lord and just left it in the Lord's sight. And it's not that, you know, you don't do anything about it. You know, uh, the, uh, I have improved a lot in life because... I have taken feedback, so negative feedback, people who criticize, even if it's negative, even if people tell me something, I work on that. You know, I don't see as, oh, they're against me, they're criticizing me, they don't like me, uh, you know, they're always, I just look at it as, an, as a time when I can take their criticisms, their negative feedback, which will help me improve. So I have become a better person when I have taken criticism and negativity from people and not let that criticism and negativity you know, um, uh, impact me. Of course, it is it impacts me to a level. Sometimes it has even, uh, you know, um, brought a lot of health issues. And God is helping me handle those things. And you, you know, just not uh, let it let me take things too emotional, be too emotional to guard my heart, which is very very important when you are in the uh, ministry. Okay, and you need to know that your stature before God is more important than before men. You know. It's, it's more important for God to love you than for people to love you. It's more important for, you know, that, you know, uh, that the Lord will stand up for you than, you know, people uh, there, you know, respecting you, have many people respecting you. It's more important for, you know, God to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant, when you enter heaven, uh, you know, than to just live for receiving praises for men. So, you know, uh, Jesus says, you know, he knows what is in the heart of man, which means he says, I know these same people today can praise me, the same people who criticize me. The same people can be for me, tomorrow they can let me down. So he knows what is in the heart of man. So he's telling us, you know, know what is in the heart of man. We can't keep on expecting people to be good to you. They can turn around one day and be bad. And so, you know, you need to guard your heart and mind and remain focused on what God has you to uh, do okay um you know uh, teach people not to idolize you or to promote you you know always uh, you know people can uh, lift you up to a position where you can become like an idol you know, and then pride st uh, steps in and then that will be your downfall so let people know that the healing deliverance the preaching the anointing all is coming uh, through the holy spirit the work of God, you are just a weak vessel, you know, you are just an earthen vessel where God is using you and it's your anointing, it's God's anointing, it's God's power and lead them to pursue God's anointing and power so that, you know, they don't keep coming running to you for prayer, but they straight away just depending on um, God. In all your promotional materials, whatever you're doing, you know, let the focus be on Jesus and not on and even when you come to a place where you become a big person, a big leader, a minister, you know, you need to always on level ground. We don't 
uh, let pride come in, be humble, to relate with people, talk with people, stand along with other believers in the same level, whatever, you know, influence you have, whatever, uh, you know, ministry you build up for yourself, name that you build up for yourself, always stay simple, always stay approachable, always stay humble, and remember who you are. You're just an earthen vessel. If it's not for the goodness, the grace, and the anointing of God, you can be no one. Okay? And um, the more you're given, the more you will be uh, accountable for. Okay? We look at that in the parable of uh, uh, Jesus says in Luke 12. You know, uh, he gave one five talents and he multiplied it to five. Okay? And the one three multiplied it to three or two or two the last one he gave one talent he didn't do anything about it and what happened you know uh, that person was thrown into hell okay so uh, we have to be accountable uh, to god for all that he has given to us you know um, the more that god entrusts to us the more accountable that uh, we need to be sometimes when god gives us you know when we come to a place where we achieve things we're doing well we kind of become lazy lax you know, um, we can say, okay, I know I can do all this. I have done this all these years. We, you know, don't concentrate much. We're not committed. We're not focused. Uh, we pay less attention to details. But we need to remember that when God raises up us for greater levels, we have to be, you know, there's greater accountability. Okay. Um, and the higher he takes us, you know, that much more humble that we need to that much more, uh, you know, humble that we need to be. Uh, the higher God takes you, the lower you need to walk, walk humbly. Uh, the more you are recognized uh, or the more recognition and honor God brings into your life, the more you need to hide your life in God. Okay? So the higher he takes you, that is time you have to be more accountable. The more time you have to spend with God. Hide yourself in God, in his word, meditate. So that you don't come to a place where you get into some sins, pride, you know, arrogance, and that can bring your downfall. And the last thing is beware of uh, God complex. Okay, you know, sometimes when we reach a position where uh, we are doing well in the ministry, uh, our uh, our organization that we started is doing well, our church is doing well. We can come to a place where we can, we think, you know, we are about the standards of the Word of God. You know, we will be preaching and teaching the Word of God, but we are not following the same things. And we think it's okay for me to indulge in that sin because, yeah, I'm a minister of God, I'm above God, the standard of the uh, Bible, of what God asks me to uh, do. And slowly we kind of excuse our sins and what we are indulging in. And, uh, you know, we become God ourselves. Come to a place where we look at ourselves as God. When nobody can point a finger at us, criticize us, tell us what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. Uh, but, you know, at those points, like it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. We need to constantly be in a place where we are submitting to others, which means we are in a place where we are, you know, listening to people, um, taking what they are saying. We are walking in a spirit of meekness, uh, walking in a spirit of humility, uh, and walking in a place where, you know, God can use us um, and, you know, uh, can use us in a, in a way that even can use people who are below us, a, a, a person in our congregation, People who are working below us can come and tell us, uh, you know, have the right, the authority to tell us what you did was wrong, what you said was wrong, how you acted was wrong. Uh, so, you know, we should be, continue to be in a place of humility, no matter how high God takes us or no matter uh, to a greater level that we get ourselves to, we always have to be in that level of meekness and humility. So that is the end of this chapter. Any questions and the book? Any questions anyone has about him? Any questions? Any questions from our um, online students? You can unmute your mics and ask. 
maybe catch it in the okay jack and jewels as the bible says they know them by their fruit so because they don't see it Oh, sorry, I have to read this out for uh, uh, ten person students. So Jackson Joel says the Bible says that you will know them by their fruit. So is it because they don't see fruit in us that they criticize us or talk behind our back? How much feedback from others should we take seriously and work on? It? And should we take feedback from everyone? Can we take instructions from people who don't practice what we say? Very good questions. Um, so the first one is how much feedback from, uh, yes, you know, one thing is a fruit. Uh, so when people don't see the fruit, uh, they can criticize or talk uh, behind our backs. But, you know, um, uh, we might not be in a season. Remember, we learned about the season. We can be in a season where um, it can be a, a, a foundation season, okay, where we are just, you know, building up. It can be a season where we are sowing the seeds, or it can be a season where we are uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, making the crops to grow. And then we come to a season where it's a harvesting season, where it's a fruit bearing season. So, uh, yes, we, we need to be patient. If people are not patient with us, you know, um, uh, we, can, we can talk about the season that the church or the ministry is going through. Uh, where we are, what we are looking for uh, at God, but in every season, yes, there is a fruit. So you can say, you can mention, okay, we have the foundation season, the foundation season, we were planning this, we are planning to do this. So what God was needing us to do is what God brought us to. Uh, so we need to give a clarity about the vision that God has given to us, the calling. So when people know the vision and the calling, then they can imagine and where we are in the vision and calling, what is our focus, what is our, um, uh, you know, objectives, what do we want to achieve in that, uh, in that specific period, uh, we need to make it known. And then we need to walk along with that uh, vision or that plan objective through that year. The next year, again, talk about where you are, which season, what is the objective, what is the the fruit or what is the end result that we are looking for. So when the pastor and the leader or when the Christian, the head of Christian organization, they are focused and they know which season, what is the objective, what is the fruit, they are making it known, then people are able to follow and discern. And then when they raise questions, they can raise, uh, you know, uh, based on what has been said, and then you can say, okay, why have we, as a group, why haven't we achieved it? What can we do to achieve it? So throughout the year, you take stock of things, you work on things, and how you can achieve it. And that's how you can come to bear in fruit. If there's no vision, the, the Bible word of God says, without the vision, the people perish. So if there's no vision, there's no goal, then, you know, we can't uh, bear fruit. And people will be walking aimlessly, and that's when they criticize, and they don't know what's happening. But once they know where you are, where you're taking them to, how each one of them has to contribute, what we should do, how we can work together, that becomes more easy. The other thing is how much feedback of others should you take in seriously and work on it? Yes, yeah, some feedbacks is, you know, sometimes they don't understand um, uh, or basically they, they're saying things without knowing, without the right perspective. You can just leave it because they're doing it unknowingly. You can talk to them, give them more clarity. But if, you know, and then sometimes people want to, their own agendas to come into place. And you know that it's, we learned about it, right? It's, it's not their agenda. How do we handle people? When you're talking about people, you know, in this in this book, how do we handle them? You know, um, you know uh, we just share the God-given vision. But as a leader, you are responsible for the vision that God has given to you. You take and run with it. And if it is the right vision, we're doing the right thing, God would speak to others, bring people alongside. If people in your team are not catching that, they're not for it, just let them be. Because if you pull them unnecessary in, they're an unnecessary baggage, let them do what they're supposed to do. You continue uh, with the rest, who are able to understand what God is doing and driving you. So don't take things too seriously when people are not understanding, they're just criticizing me. They are um, overlooking the point, 
or uh, you know they're not able to see through clearly then you just uh, you know you need to discern with the help of the holy spirit and just pick things that are important things that are unnecessary can we take instructions from people the last question can we take instructions from people who don't practice uh, what they say yes because when they don't do it themselves it's basically you know uh, they have no right to point at others and because they're not following themselves or um, you know they're just busy, busy bodies criticizing others going about being busy bodies gossiping and criticizing others and uh, you know uh, they're not having the time to look at their own thoughts but uh, you know uh, irrespective of even if it comes you know from such kind of people i always look at take those instructions and always see how it can help <laughs> sorry how it can help my ministry how it can help me and it has helped me and it's some so i don't bother that if they're not practicing it um if it's a good point i take it because it's going to ultimately help me benefit my ministry my walk with my with god and help me to also understand things what i'm not able to see what other people are looking at me it just helps me gives me more clarity and and helps me be a better person better minister of god better teacher and that can also will not be a hindrance from somebody else so somebody else can have the same hindrance so why you know can uh, can be a hindrance for me effectively ministering to them relating to them or can be a downfall the ministry so i look at it i take it and i just work on it and build uh, you know work on it for myself and it helps did that help jackin Thank you, Jackie. Anyone else? Any any other questions from our online students, person students? Okay. Um, I posted assessment code for uh, uh, the online students last evening, um, and that's the end of the code assessments. It is the end of our class. There's so much we learned. There's so much I keep learning every time I teach. Uh, so let's not just be hearers, but also the doers. Um, so just don't study for the sake of doing an exam or an assessment. Go back, look at some important things that you can inculcate, you can appropriate in your life, and let's begin uh, living a life that honors God and more Christ-like so we can point others to Christ. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the wealth of knowledge and information that we receive, uh, how to know, how to uh, uh, to receive guidance from your word, from the Holy Spirit. Uh, also, God, how to fulfill the purpose and the call that you have called us to. We thank you that you have a calling, a purpose, a vision for each one of us. And even as you entrust it to us, God, we pray that we would open our hearts and minds that uh, we would be open to receive, to accommodate, uh, uh, to be good stewards of what you are entrusting to us. And if we are in the preparation period, God, uh, we just submit our lives, we surrender our lives, we submit our lives to you, God, that you would work in us, that you would prepare us before you take hold of what you are entrusting to us, God. For those of us who you have entrusted your vision, your call, God, we pray that we would be faithful, committed, uh, that we would always, um, God, walk in, uh, uh, and run uh, in honoring you in everything that we do, say, and think, um, uh, in the way that we relate to people, in the way we fellowship with people, the way we conduct our lives, our ministry. God, would be God honoring, God pleasing, and we pray that you would show us areas, for God, the Holy Spirit, that you show us areas where we are altering, where we are weak, uh, where we areas that we have overlooked, that even as you point it out to us, you lay your finger on it, God, we pray that you would, we would be willing to see, to open our hearts for your cleansing, for your uh, renewal, for your restoration, um, and God, for your forgiveness in our lives, that we can run our race, God, uh, uh, with perseverance, fixing our eyes on Jesus, and not uh, looking to, uh, to men or women, uh, not to be men pleasers, not to uh, uh, to build uh, ourselves uh, to be famous or um, uh, to be honored by people, but looking to honoring you, God, doing your will, and positioning ourselves, being at the right time, the right, right place, in the right season, and doing, God, 
what you have portioned for us, what you have uh, uh, caught hold of us, God, what you are leading us to do, God. We thank you. We bless each one of the students, uh, all of our students in our e-learn course, online course, and in person. We bless them in your name. And God, we pray that each one of us will run our race so well, so faithfully, that we will hear well done, good and faithful service. We thank you, we praise you, we give all the glory and all that praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you next semester. Uh, have a blessed um, holiday and a good uh, Christmas season. Uh, enjoy the time with family and friends. Uh, have a blessed day. Thank you so much. Uh, you have any doubts, any questions, you can still post it on the stream page. I will answer it and take things from there. Thank you.